Today we're driving the Q60S. It's Infiniti's entry in the very competitive luxury sport coupe market. Now, you may be more familiar with it as the G37. They renamed their cars in 2014, but this is still the same great G37 we know and love. What does this car have? Well, under the hood is a 3.7 liter V6. It's good for 330 horsepower, 270 pound-feet of torque. And because it's naturally aspirated, all that power should come on all at once. It's connected to a seven-speed automatic transmission that features drive sport mode. What does that do? We'll check it out later. Just because it has a lot of power doesn't mean it drinks a lot of fuel. This car actually gets 19 miles to the gallon in the city, 27 on the highway. Really? Not bad for what you're getting. Because this is a proper sport coupe, it powers the rear wheels and it has the benefit of a rear limited slip differential, which means you get all the power to both wheels at the same time. That should make this car a great driving machine. Now, of course, this is a coupe, so it does have two seats in the back, although not really for full-size adults. You know, once I get back here, it's still pretty tight. Yeah, um, the benefit though is that it's a four-seat car, which improves insurance premiums. So yay for that. It even has a pass-through, so you can probably fit three golf bags back there. And under here, we have a full-size spare and all the tools necessary to fix it. Sweet. Now you'll notice this car, it looks like it's come straight from a tuning shop. That's because this is the S model and it features a lot of really cool extras. First off, you'll notice the lacquered wheels. They're a little bit wider in the back than they are in the front. In the back is a lip spoiler that also carries across that same black accent. And then all the way in the rear, you got two fat tailpipes. And they make a sound that is truly magnificent. As equipped, this Q60S runs about $50,000. Let's take it for a drive and see how she does. So you might be a little confused about the naming structure of Infinities. This used to be the G37 and it is now called the Q60. Yes, there's also a Q50 and so on and so on. Naming aside, this is still the same old G37 that we've driven so many times before. When you get a new car, like when I get a new car to test, there's always something really new and shiny and kind of cool. It's like, ooh, I haven't seen that. Like, uh, for example, the Star Trek inspired touchpad on the Mercedes C-Class. That's really cool and it really gets me excited. Um, however, what gets me excited about this car? It's got none of that. It has a nav system. It has Bluetooth hands-free. It has all the stuff that you need in a car but it does it in such a traditional way. <laughs> it, this is a traditional, you could say this car is a little bit of a throwback in that regard, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Sometimes you want a car where you sit in it and everything just makes sense. That is the Q60S. Push button start. Oh, and the sound. I mean, already the car has just started and that motor sounds so good. This is a classic V6. It is just a big, beefy V6. It's related to the same V6 that you get in Nissan pickups, that you get in the GTR, although they are obviously different applications, each of those. Here it is a just it's just an awesome motor. It really is. People race these motors for years. First off, the dash. Two gauges, a little monochrome display in the middle. Very straightforward. I can read that tack, big and sweeping. I can read the speedo, big and sweeping. No heads up display, no goofy stuff where I'm gonna be like, oh, is that gonna break or any of that? No, boom, right there. Old school baby. The dash is really nice plastics. The steering wheel has nice leather wrap. And this is kind of something I really like about Infinities. When you're moving the steering wheel, it doesn't just move the wheel, it moves the whole, it moves the whole gauge cluster. 
That is awesome. I can never get these things adjusted correctly. So often I end up with the top of the steering wheel cutting off the gauge cluster. Because Infinity moves the entire unit, I don't have that problem. It's awesome for somebody like me. Uh, behind the steering wheel here are stock mounted paddle shifters. They look like they're magnesium alloy with little leather insets. Feel very nice, feel very, very racy. I like them and they're big. So you can find them when you're in the heat of steering, which is very cool. Let's move on to the nav system. It has everything that you really need in a nav system. Uh, it has a map view. It has the ability to navigate. Let's type in destination. Let's go to places. And I can say, let's look for a Starbucks near the current location. Okay, Starbucks says there's 1,629. And there we go. Moving down, we have the now trademarked infinity clock in the middle uh, with flanked by stereo controls again very traditional so that means i know where they're at i don't have to search all over the place uh, and then right below that you have six little preset chiclets that are kind of inset into this really really nice brushed aluminum it's and it's all around me this is beautiful i love it so aircon, again, traditional. It does have dual climate controls, which is great because my wife and I can never agree on in-car temperatures. Uh, this is, of course, the automatic. It's lovely leather wrapped. Has a nice little metal inlay there. And to get into the drive sport mode that I discussed earlier, you just put it over into manual setting. I can then use the paddle shifters or I can shift up and down using the stick right there. Moving back. Seat warmers, it doesn't cool though, it just warms. That's okay. The seat I'm sitting in, it is heated and it is getting all nice and toasty. Let's go ahead, buckle up, take this guy for a ride. And try not to get any tickets. This is a red car. Okay, pump it over to drive sport mode. Let's go ahead and roll up right here. And go. Woohoo! That motor is epic. <laughs> Forget fuel economy. I would just blow through a whole tank of gas in this thing. So let's talk about economy. This is a V6 Sport Coupe. <laughs> Normally, you don't talk about economy. <laughs> but well, while we're on the subject, this will get 19 miles to the gallon in the city and 27 on the highway, according to the EPA testing. You know, that's not really that bad considering what you're getting. Um, it is a quick car. It has a motor that's a no compromise symphony of awesome. And uh, you know, economy? Yeah, that's not what you're shopping for with this one. If you want a car that's really gonna just be nuts to bolts, dead on reliable, um, this would be the car to seriously consider. Uh, and you know, it'll, it'll give you grins for the next decade because uh, it is that much fun to drive. And you can redline it in manual mode. It'll just ping right off the red line. That's sweet. I love it. Such nice noises. Love the handling on this thing. The suspension is tight enough that you can feel what the car is doing, but not so tight as to give you a headache or knock your fillings out. It really is an excellent balance and something you would kind of expect from a luxury sport coupe. Oh, so nice. You know, honestly, for $50,000, I think this is really a great bargain. And it's because it does everything just so incredibly well. This is a car that you can buy, drive every single day, and you'll just have to do routine maintenance for the most part. Uh, it is a solid car that's well proven, um, and it delivers. It delivers in smiles, it delivers in performance, it delivers in speed. You, you buy it for this. That's what you buy it for, the sweet symphony of the V6. That's it for me. I'm probably gonna be going to jail soon. 
I'm Ryan Douthit for AutoNation. We'll see you again next time.